Uh, okay, so a very good morning to one and all. Uh, I, Ashutosh Kumar of BTEC 8 semester, is uh, having a presentation on seminar report, which has been given to us by our faculty and AKTU. So I am giving my special regards and thanks to our professor, uh, HOD C.S. Yadav, sir, as well as to all the faculties for giving us such an enhanced project to work on on this quarantine pandemic which is going on and secondly to all the advanced technologies and setups that they have contributed to us so that the work shall not get stopped. So I give a special thanks and kudos to NIT organization as well as to the AKTU Technical University. So moving quickly towards my presentation topic, my presentation topic is known as the introduction to DNS system, which is domain name space. So let me quickly share my screen so that it could be uh, easily accessible to you all. Okay, so as you can see, the first slide of my presentation consists of DNS system, which means domain name space. And below you can see my name and my section as well as my roll number. So what is domain name system? So the purpose of naming, as we all know that domain name system is a domain which has been provided to various uh, sites, websites, so that they could acquire a certain ID from which they are belonging. Okay, so the purpose of naming is addresses are used to locate objects. Its name are easier than numbers. We can easily identify it by numbers rather than name because names are quite complex, if I have to say. So if we want to get the address of an object, we can use that name, particular object name to get the address. Okay, so that the domain system provides a mapping from name to name or to several resources of several types. Okay, moving to next presentation topic we are having a domain name so domain name is a way to identify and locate computers connected to internet no two organization can have same domain name as it can say for example nit is an organization and aktu is also an organization but they do not share a same domain okay so it is a good thing just like a just like you're having a database so we are in database we are also having a unique id so like that in domain name also we are having uniqueness Okay, so here you can see the example. For example, we are having www.yahoo.co.in as well as www.facebook.com. So these both are having different domain name and hence they are accessible differently. So the structure of domain name, if I have to talk about, then it consists of a last name subdomain, second level domain, and top level domain. Okay, so the top level domain cons uh, comes always at the suffix it can be dot com it can be dot in and the second level domain usually consists of the identifier which usually belongs to the organization uh, it can be a name which is easily to recognizable and understandable and the third level domain is called world wide web which comes at first so it works in a uh, reverse order rather than moving from first order to the last then uh, you can, uh, if you want to see the domain name space, you can see the domain name space on the top uh, left corner of your of your computer uh, when you open any Google search engine or any other search engine. Then talking about top level domain. So as we have said that the top level domain comes from the reverse form and it is always at the last if we read it from left to right okay so the top level domain are classified into three categories which are generic domains country domains and reverse domains okay so generic domains are generally nature country domains is belonging to a particular country for example if, if i talk about my organization niet then we are having niet.co.in so dot co dot in represent india which represent the country domain so Moving ahead, we are having an organizational or generic domain. So it consists of three character code which indicate the primary function of the organization or their general behavior. Means what organization is doing. So just like I have said that it comes into the secondary domain that shows that what is the task of the organization. 
So if I talk about UDU cos.edu, as you can see in the example given in the PPT, then you can find that that means that they are providing something with educational purposes. Then you can see for non-commercial website, they are having their own kind of name, just like Eclavia.organization. Okay, for military organization, they are having a domain name dot mil which stands for military. And then for international organization, we are having dot int. Okay, so we are moving towards the, the last part of the domain, which is the third part that comes first. If we talk about from left to right, then that consists of geographical or country domain. So uh, if I talk about geographical or country domain, that usually represent the country code. So if I talk about India, so India is having a country code of dot .in. If I talk about Japan, then Japan is having a country code of dot .jp. If I talk about United States, the United States is having a code of dot .us. And similarly for France and Italy, we are having dot .fr, China and Australia are having dot .it or cn. Okay, so for different countries, they are having a different sort of domain so that it could be easily accessible as well as see by other people that from which country this particular organization or this particular domain belongs to. Then we are having a reverse domain. So the reverse domain is a certain uh, unique kind of thing which we came across. So it is a special domain uh, named in address.apra that is used to translate the IP address to fully qualified domain name. Okay, so here we used to translate our given IP address to a fully qualified domain name. Means we are not making a domain name system here. We are just converting the IP address of that particular of website into a fully domain domain name. So, for example, we are having a 1.4.220.134 in address APRA. So it will return suncsci.wlb. So this is the domain name okay which has been generated from the ip address okay so this is called as a reverse domain so moving towards more deeper part of the domain name system then we are having each domain is having their own correspondence IP address. That's why we are in previous slide I mentioned reverse IP address because from IP address we are generating a domain name system. But usually what happens if we you access the domain name system, then on particular that IP address the website has open, will be opening. Okay, so uh, a domain has a correspondence IP address. So when the user types the domain name in the address bar, the corresponding IP address is supplied. Such a translation is possible with the help of a system called DNS domain name system. Okay. So when the user types the domain name in the address, bar, for example, you're using a Google search engine and you have two address about NIH. So what you will going to do, you will going to type the website domain name there and the corresponding IP address is applied by the backend. And then after that, the translation process happens and the NIET website is being opened. Okay, so definition if I talk about it, so domain name system is a collection of database that contains information about domain name and their corresponding IP address. Then working of the DMN, as you can see in the diagram that a user which is just sitting on his laptop and is doing work from home just like us, what we are doing right now. So he typed a domain name space and it goes to a DNS server and uh, where they, you can see the box and the penguin sitting in front. So this is the logo of the DNS server. And then the IP address of that particular website has been sent on the client's laptop so that that presentation shall get open. Now, as the IP address came, after IP address came, the HTTP request and response is being given to the web server so that the data or the HTML tags which has been present inside on that particular ID will be will come across okay so quickly moving to the next so uh, if i talk about uh, that in a verdict form or in a manual form so it says that when an application needs to communicate with other people computer uh, it needs to translate the name and the com uh, other computer into its ip address the application program that requests the service then becomes a client of dns okay so the application program that requires the service then becomes a client of the dns which means that if i if i have accessed the niet address from my pc then i became the client 
I want to query something, I want to retrieve the information something. So I became the client of the NIET that I want to grab essential information from the NIET website. Okay, it then sent the request to the DNS server. So our request will go to the DNS server, the server look up the name and then set as the correct IP address of the NIET website. So a large number of DNS servers may be involved to get the right IP address after receiving the correct IP address. Okay. So I, the communication between the, then the communication between the two communication starts. The communication which is at the administrator level of the NIET block as well as my personal PC, the, com the communication will going to get started. Okay, so you can see uh, the wonderful example that has been, uh, I provided you in the presentation is there that when you type name www.yahoo.com into your browser, so it asks the local DS, DNS server at ISPs and for its IP address. Okay, so when local DNS server does not find the IP address of given name, it forwards a request to root DNS server and again inquire about IP address of it. The root DNS server applies, I do not know the IP address of www.yahoo.com, but know the IP address of the com DNS server. Okay, the local DNS server then asks the com DNS server for IP address. Okay. So here you can see the four step process which has been given there where a laptop asks a local DNS server but it, it cannot find there then he went to the root DNS server to find that and at last then the uh, transaction happens at that stage of third tree where he said that I do not know what type of IP address you are searching for then the local DNS asks the DNS server for IP address and then there he got the IP address of the client uh, for the www.yahoo.com and then he able to fetch that. So this is a quick example of DNS example which I have given you. Moving ahead we are having another DL, uh, continuation with the DNS example then the DNS uh, server uh, replies the same answer it does not know the IP address of www.yahoo.com but now the IP address of yahoo.com DNS server which is then returned to local DNS system. Now as the server uh, as the client has requested a DNS server so in response to that it is for sure that they will be going to give us the response. So they have given us the response and then at 6 you can uh, see uh, that uh, the local DNS server then ask the yahoo.com DNS server for IP address as they have find www.yahoo.com DNS. Then they asked the DNS server of www.yahoo.com to be given to them and it then replies with the IP address. And now at the end, at the eighth process, the local DNS server of a client has been connected to the official website of Yahoo. So this is the whole transaction which happens into the DNS system. So the Example which I have given you is quite complex because uh, it may happen that the exception raises and these exceptions has been raised into the point two, three, and four and five. I could have given you a simple example where there cannot there cannot be any exception, but it could only lead you to given a half knowledge. And as Albert Einstein always says that uh, partial knowledge is worse than the full knowledge. Okay, so we always have to Ready, be ready with the exceptions also. That's why I've given you a bit typical example. Okay, so quickly moving ahead, we are having certain features of DNS. So if I talk about DNS feature, then we are having a global distribution. Data is maintained locally, but retrievable only. For example, if you have, uh, if the NIET had made the website, it could happen that it had made the website in his uh, uh, intervention center or the incubation center which we are having in our admin blog, but that website is maintained as well as access globally by any of the person. Any of the person sitting across the globe can access the website. So it, it, we can say that the data is maintained locally in the NIT, but it is retrievable globally. Any part of the world, even a remote, remotest access can also be given to the global distribution. Then no single computer has all DNS data then DNS lookups can be performed by any devices. Remote DNS data is locally catchable to improve performance. Now talking about scalability. So no limit to the size of the database. One server can have almost more than 20 lakh names, as you can say, it means the data scalability feature to maintain the data and to keep the data is much scalable in the domain name space and the Query distributed among masters, slaves, and caches are also good. 
then talking about dynamism so database can be updated dynamically add delete modify of any record modification the master database triggers replication as you all know that the data if has been given by the client it will be going to store in a database so it is uh, necessary that we shall maintain a single point of failure means a prudent mistake can also be detected and as well as the data should be easily retrievable from the database columns that is essential okay which because it overall determines the performance of the website so the data is replicated data from master is copied to multiple set for example if you are having uh, if you are having or if we have collected much amount of data so that is the data where we, what we have collected is called as repository where we used to store it okay so if you are having a large amount of data that we can divide the major repository into multiple small repositories so that uh, data can be maintained it the division of the data can happen on various uh, parameters might be on the basis of uh, year might be on the basis of any particular column id okay so it is reliable okay so master slave approach is a quite good thing where we can segregate the data we can where we can make the analysis of the data for query and local catches so that the performance shall not get affected because at the end we require a performance from the website that's important Moving towards the last feature of the DNS, loose coherency. The database is always internally consistent. Okay, so each version of a subset of the database, a zone has a serial number. The serial number is incremented on each database and the cache data expired according to time or set by the zone administrator. Okay, so these are some of the few of the domain name space, space features which I have given, which I have mentioned in this presentation as well as into the, my seminar report. Uh, or there, there is vast and vulnerable things which you can read or enhance yourself more by getting the knowledge from the Google or by searching mostly. Okay, so this is the few out of the greater concept of the domain name space I have presented to you in this presentation. I hope you like my presentation and, uh, and thank you for listening to my presentation okay so uh, here i have completed my seminar pre presentation i hope that it will be a positive feedback to you and i'll be getting a positive feedback from you all and uh, thank you